Thanks for checking out this video. So this is one of my more relaxed videos. I don't have notes or anything. I'm just kind of talking about a topic that's kind of my personal opinion. And that is what I should lead with disclaimer wise. All these things are my personal opinions, whether it's this video or any of my review videos. So yeah, people are usually very nice in the comments about it. Um, by and large, actually like 99% I'd say. So that's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, so the topic of this is about Rob Zombie. For some reason, Rob Zombie is extremely polarizing within the horror community. Uh, people on the side who love him, people who hate him, and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot as far as people in the middle who love him and hate him. So I guess I might be the closest thing there is to a middle on Rob Zombie because there are things I really love about Rob Zombie and there are things I, I don't love about Rob Zombie. So I'll kind of hit both those areas with this. So first of all, his films. That's the big thing. What do I think of his films? Uh, for the most part, I don't like the majority of his, his films. Like, I don't really like House of a Thousand Corpses, w except for like the last 10 to 15 minutes, honestly, with the whole, you know, Dr. Satan underground thing. Which, by the way, I listened to uh, a review, a review, an interview that he did for Eli Ross' History of Horror, and she, he was talking about how that whole portion at the end was just tacked on kind of like as a, you know, extra because they ended up having extra time and extra budget. Like, it, it wasn't in the initial script. And for me, that ended up being the best part of it. Uh, the, one of the reasons I don't really like the film all that much is it feels like it's very much just pieces of older films just kind of mashed together. Like, it didn't feel like its own film because it just felt like it was a bunch of ideas from other films all kind of put together. Now, I know that people would kind of say, and people do say all the time, that there really are not no original ideas anymore. That we're all kind of borrowing, all filmmakers are borrowing from someone else. But the way it's packaged a lot of the times can be made to feel more original or have kind of an original spin on it or more personal spin on it, which... I think the personal aspect of what Rob Zombie brings a lot is his kind of like gritty feel and look to a lot of things, and he certainly does that. Um, I don't feel either way on that kind of gritty look and feel. Uh, I think he executes it well for what he's going for, but I just his stories typically for me are too simplistic for what I enjoy a lot of the times, and like I said, it just seems like he's taking pieces of a bunch of other films and just kind of throwing them together. So that's on display in House of a Thousand Corpses, and I also think like Three from Hell. But, like a lot of people say, I do think that Devil's Rejects is one of his favorite. It, it's one of his, I think it is one of his favorites, but it's one of his best films by far. Uh, it looks really good. It's well executed. I think writing-wise it may be his best, or one of his best. Um, so I do like that. Don't I tried watching his Halloween remake, the first one, and I should probably go back and try and finish it out and do the second one just because. But I started watching it and I bailed 20 minutes in because I just didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like where it was going. I didn't like the composition of it. But that's why I say I should probably go back. So I can't have like a full on opinion on that. Uh, I do actually own his animated film he did, El Super Bisto, which I actually think is pretty fun. And it's, it's crude. It's like a fun crude uh, that I enjoy. Um, I mean... I'm reviewing a lot of Giallo films, so I, I enjoy, like, a fun crude a lot of the time. Um, so I would recommend that for people like animated stuff. I think he did a pretty solid job with that, keeping it fun. Uh, I will say that Lords of Salem, I really do like Lords of Salem. I think, personally, it's the most beautiful thing he's ever shot. I think it actually has a lot of style to it. And I think that's one of the big things is when I saw it, it really struck me as, whoa, this is a different Rob Zombie. This is a very different Rob Zombie. Now, it did still have what I was talking about with things like House of a Thousand Corpses, where he's taking pieces from other films, but it did feel like his own, and it felt like he kind of brought it all together and wrapped it all up in a really interesting way. One of the other big things is the acting of Sherry Moon Zombie was very restrained. It was very low-key, and it fit a really interesting character in the film. And that's one of the other things, is he puts Sherry Moon in everything that he does. And I don't necessarily have a problem with people 
working with people they know or people they trust, which from what I've heard from Rob Zombie, he likes to work with people that he likes and trusts, and that's why you end up seeing a lot of the same people. Plus, I think that from what I know and what I've heard, a lot of the people who end up working with him actually really like him and like the way he operates, so they're more than willing to come back and keep working with him, so it's a good relationship there. And he does seem like he's probably a pretty nice guy in real life. But um, I, I'm not big on nepotism. I, I usually roll my eyes as soon as I see that someone has cast a family member in something, unless it's Ted Raimi being cast by Sam Raimi. Because Ted Raimi, I think, has, like, real chops. Like, he is a real good actor. I don't think Sherry Moon is that great. Although, like I was saying, I think she did a really good job in Lords of Salem. Uh, I just hate her character otherwise in, you know, the, the Firefly trilogy just can't stand that character it's obnoxious it's a combination of how she plays it and how it's written so a lot of my issues with his filmmaking comes to that like the writing style I'm not into the writing style but I think that's basically all I want to say about his actual film stuff so there you see why I'm in the middle like I like I really liked Devil's Rejects and I really like uh, Lords of Salem but other than that most of the stuff I'm not big into that's just my thing him personally, I really have a lot of respect for, for him because he started in music, so he's got a wonderful musical talent. I've listened to White Zombie and uh, when he was solo uh, throughout my years, so I liked his music all the time. Then when he stepped over to film, I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. He can actually have the skills to do film as well. Now, he got started with doing music videos, so that's how he got you know, dipped his toe into that. And then he moved on to doing actual movies. And I kind of viewed it as he's a fanboy. And this is kind of the way Eli Roth is, I think, which I'll do a video on my thoughts on Eli Roth. But um, it he's a fanboy of horror who just happened to be able to make that jump into actually making film himself. And I think that ends up being a lot of the reason that a lot of the stuff in his films end up feeling like they're just taken from other films. Because he's such a big fan of all these other films that he draws from that he's, I don't think he's doing it from the standpoint of just like stealing. I think it's more from the standpoint of like paying respects, giving homage to these films and sometimes doing a little bit of parody as well. So I respect it. But like I said, a lot of times it doesn't really play all that well for me personally, but I have a lot of respect for him personally for that reason that whenever you can, be good or be successful in more than one realm in your life as far as jobs go, I have a lot of respect for that. It shows that you're multi-talented. It shows that you're a very intricate person and you're wildly talented. I, I love that about him. Um, so I have a lot of respect. I also have a lot of respect for him because of how independent he is. And I've listened to interviews with him where he talks about how he operates with making films and he just wants to do things his way. So it really sometimes comes off of him just being like an ass and seeming like, man, he must be hard to work for, work for and work with. But when you think about it, it really is more from the standpoint of like the big industry, like Hollywood studios. It's probably really tough for them. It seems like it's actually not very tough and actually very enjoyable for the people working cast and crew for the films. It's just he has creative visions and he wants to execute those creative visions as best he personally can because, and a lot of people have commented on this, it can get very frustrating when studios step in and start putting their hands all over stuff because it ends up turning into some other vision and ends up not being their vision. And I think one of the things is where Rob Zombie comes from with having as much control as he has over his music with throughout his career, that's what he was used to. He was used to having that creative control. So when he made that step over to film, he felt like, that's what I want. Like, I, I don't want to do this, and I don't need to do this uh, unless I can have creative control. And so, yeah. So I respect that about him a lot. And also the fact that there was this one incident that happened that boosted my respect for him even more where he had done it, I think he did a show with, or he went to the show of, the group Baby Metal. Now, if you don't know who Baby Metal is, look them up on YouTube. You can find their music. They're literally a fusion of heavy metal and J-pop. And if you don't know what J-pop is, that's Jap Japan pop. It's like Japanese pop music, which 
I'll admit right now, I like J-pop. I listen to J-pop every now and then. It's a t- t- song. It's a music style that actually calms me and makes me happy. And you'll see why if you listen to it or if you ever have listened to it. Um, but this the baby metal group, they have this fusion of metal and, and J-pop, which I think is kind of fun and cool. And Rob Zombie did as well. So he had a situation where he posed with them for a photo and put it on social media. And people were berating him because he said good things about baby metal. And people were like, oh, that's not real heavy metal. Oh, this is wussy stuff. Why would you, you know, why would you dilute your brand like this? And, you know, just things like that. And his re- he responded to that. And he was just like, look, these girls and these guys in the band are artists they're creative and they're more heavy metal than you probably are people who are complaining internet trolls so that kind of boosted my respect for him even more because it shows that independence it shows that look i like what i like and i don't have to say that i like something else or say that i don't like something because that's what you want from me he is who he is he is his own person and he presents himself as this is who I am, and this is what I like, and this is, you know, this is who I am creatively, this is who I am personality-wise, and if you love that, that's cool. If you don't, then whatever, you know, like, you can go away, that's fine, Um, but he's not doing terrible things in life, you know, I I know there are people with that type of personality, but they're horrible humans. It seems like he's that that personality, but he's a good guy, so I like that. Plus, I like listening to his interviews. Um, He has a lot to say because he comes from that film fan standpoint much like why i love listening to things from eli roth actually which that gives you a little view into what i what i'll say in my video about eli roth but i don't want to go too far on this um we can go ahead and have a discussion put some put some comments down how do you feel about not you know not just like a, i love him i hate him he sucks he's great how do you feel about rob zombie like What are some of your favorite films? Do you not like any of his films? Do you love all of his films? And why? I want to know these reasons. Like, why? What is it? And that's one of the big things is a lot of times when people uh, argue about Rob Zombie, there isn't much nuance to it. It's always, I hate him, he sucks. Or, I love him, he's great. Well, tell me why he's great. Tell me why you love him. And tell me why you don't like him. You know, don't just say he sucks. Like, give some actual criticism. Say, I don't like his films because they don't connect with me because blah, blah, blah. You know, like, be a smarter person. You can't just say, I hate something, I love something, and expect people to respect you. It's a very idiotic thing to just leave a base emotion as your response for certain things. Because... People aren't going to respond to that well. They really are not. It just doesn't land well. But just saying. Anyway, but put your comments down there. I'd love to talk to you about, you know, go back and forth on, you know, your thoughts. Because maybe there are aspects of of his films that I don't appreciate that through telling me how you appreciate them, that could kind of change my view on it. That happens. That's another thing. I'm an adult. And I have no problem with changing my view on things if I see logic in it. Or if I, if I, you know, someone points something out that gives me that aha moment, I'm open to it. And we all should be. But anyway, thank you for checking this out. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button if you like this video or any video I've ever done. Uh, that's your way to repay me. Because um, I'm not like making money. I'm just trying to build a nerdy horror community here so we can talk nerdy horror stuff. But would appreciate that. Also hit the notification bell button because then that way you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, which is usually four at least four a week um yeah but regardless i appreciate you taking your time to watch this until next time keep it brutal